Now let's take this currency converter user control discussion further. So what if this currency converter control is in stack panel and what we need is there is one more control we need. Uh, let's say we need a label here. So a label control. Uh, which is going to have some name here let's call it as lbl display and then by default this label will have a content which is going to be something like look for converted value here and it's going to be empty label initially so what if i run this project what you will see is There is a currency converter and then as and when okay so looks like the other control is not visible so most probably what i'll have to do here is there is a user control which is overlaying on top of the label so most probably i take the label up here and then i'll have the rest of the controls added so again let's run this and see what we get in the ui here we are so now as you can see the first control that is rendered here is lookout for converted value here as and when I enter dollar value and if I click on convert what you see is 7000 rupees. So what if on click of convert as I'm getting 7000 value in the text box on the extreme right but which is actually part of currency converter user control itself. What if I need to take this user control value out here in place of look for converted value here. How do I get it? How do I tell to this outer window that the converted value is 7000 right now on a click of button which is already part of user control. So I really want on the button click which is inside a user control, I want to tell the outer label uh, what is the value of converted uh, uh, currency. So in that case we have couple of options. One option that you have is one can very well pass on some sort of value by reference over here then we can very well set up that value while we are setting it in user control. This is user control project meanwhile. So I have reloaded the CC control project. In cc.xaml.cs uh, what you will see is on conversion like we are setting value in the text box. Similar way we may want to hand over this value outside. So right now whenever user control object is created one way is you can pass on something in the constructor, you can have a getter setter here and then just like you are setting a value of a text box as text, just like that you can set up a value of that property and that property whenever changes, that property can keep on telling the outer window that is I change, you also change. I am talking from binding perspective one more time. So either you expose a kind of a dependency property from this user control which you will change whenever text boxes value is set up. And then ultimately that will change the dependent controls which will be part of Windows 7.xaml. So either you, you start using dependency control or dependency property over here. But if you recall dependency property needs one condition. The dependency property says if somebody is acting as a source. Example if user control 1 has a property and which is acting as a source of the data specifically for this label which is going to have contain property. In that case, what happens is the source class must inherit from control class or must inherit from dependency object if you recall. So right now user control one class is inheriting from user control. If I just go to definition here, you will find out it is inheriting from content control. Content control inherits from a control control class inherits from framework element then up in the hierarchy we see framework element comes from UI element and UI element comes from visual and finally you will notice visual comes from dependency object and this is something that we used other day when we discussed uh, about or in other session when we discussed about something called as dependency property concept. But then this is a kind of you can say a long way to achieve this.
So ultimately what we want, whenever button click happens, just like we are setting up a value in case of text boxes text, I really want to notify somewhere in the UI that this is the so and so value of uh, maybe currency being converted or currency which got converted. So in that case, one best option we have is working with events and delegates. So dependency property can be one solution, passing something by reference can be other solution. And now the third one that we have here is something like you simply work with events. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to define one custom event over here. So let me define public event, let's say raise currency conversion or currency changed. So I would say currency converted maybe as an event. Now, if you're a C -sharp programmer, you already know that event just cannot be alone declared or defined. You need to have a delegate over here. So a delegate which is going to point to some method which will expect a value which is going to be the rupees value. So ultimately I'm looking for a method in the outer kind of you can say container that is window which will expect a parameter which is going to be currency parameter which is going to be currency being converted maybe double parameter in this case. So what we will do is instead of we creating a delegate here we will better have a delegate which is action delegate it's a dot nets uh, what we call it as inbuilt delegate and which is generic delegate. So it's just going to ask you, tell me a method signature that you need. So I need a method signature which returns nothing that is void by default. That is the reason action is famous for. So I'm writing a delegate which points to a method which returns nothing and then it expects a parameter which is going to be a double, let's say, currency converted. Okay, CC is what I'll say. So a double parameter is what is expected in return. Now what I need to do is raise currency converted. Now when shall I raise? Whenever this particular text box's text value changes from blank to the uh, changed value or currency value, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call raise changed or raise currency converted. And then I'm just going to pass on a value that is available here that is going to be RS value over here. So Whenever a button gets button convert gets clicked, I am raising an event and then I am passing a value over here. This becomes a job of user control. Okay, now let me recompile this user control and then let's try to go here, rebuild the 00 demo project so that we can accommodate the latest DLL in the project. And now the scene is in Windows 7, we already have here user control available. Now just like button has a click event, our user control has one more event over here and that is going to be something called as raise currency converted. So just like button has a click event, user control one has a raise currency converted. I'm going to write an event handler here and see to it now, if I just go back to code, you will see there is one method generated in the code behind called as my currency converter raise currency converted kind of you can say event handler which will take a parameter which is called as double object. I will rather take rupees value over here. So RS value is what I'll call it as. Now this particular value is something I need to show it in text box and which not text box label in this case. So LBL display has a content and which is going to be RS value in this case and that's very very simple. Let's convert this into string and show it as a content into the label display. So now if you look at the code, if I just put a breakpoint here, if I put a breakpoint in here and if we run the project one more time, let's run it and see what we get on a screen. So I'm going to put here one more time 70. One more time if I click on convert, the call goes to button convert click. We will do all kind of conversion here and then I'm going to raise the event which is already handled in case of the user class that is Windows 7. So if I just press F10 or F11, you will find out since in Windows 7, we already have conveyed whenever raise currency converter is raised, please call this this function. You will find out the call goes to this function now. And then we will see here that 7, sorry, 4900 as in value is collected here. And then it will be shown in the labels display. And then we can see the values are available over here. So if you look at the above label, this value, which is part of text box, 
is actually thrown out using event rays and then it is captured by the container by simply writing an event handler. So writing a delegate, writing an event and raising an event becomes one of the easiest way to deal with the user controls and uh, you know collecting the values or passing the values through the container or to the container that way. So keep it in mind barring dependency properties, barring declaring normal properties, passing something in the constructor, you'll find out event delegate becomes a favorite way of developers to have a communication between the host and the content which is user control in this case. Hope I have made this point of container and content communication clear to you all.